Hey everybody. <laughs> Let's try that again. Hey everybody, uh, it's Dr. Ted Shire here with Monty Wyatt today. And he is a professional business coach. And he is with the John Maxwell team and will tell us about Live to Lead today. Welcome, Monty. Ted, thank you for having me. Hey, uh, go ahead and tell us a little bit about your background and, and what you're up to. You know, uh, I'm an Iowa boy, grew up on a farm in Northeast Iowa, Iowa State University in ag business, you know, typical Iowa thing to do, and, and uh, spent 14 years in the agricultural chemical world, and spent most of my time traveling around the country, and it kept me away from my number one passion, which is, is my family, and so it's actually been 12 years ago already, I left that industry, and uh, 12 years ago, I started working with business owners and executives to grow their businesses, uh, grow their leadership abilities, and uh, really help people achieve what they want out of their lives and their organizations. Absolutely. How long have you been with the John Maxwell team? Uh, it's been five five years ago already. Yeah. And uh, so coaching for 12, but uh, added John Maxwell and uh, his content five years ago. Yeah. So you're a founding member. Absolutely. Yeah. Great. Hey, and I, I want to say a little bit about uh, what, what you know, the John Maxwell team is doing. And, and I think John is uh, an example in particular because he, you know, he, he doesn't need to make any more money and, and mm -hmm. he's chosen to, to not retire. And that's, I, I mean, that's, that's a great example because uh, we, we need that. You know, as we were talking before we started here, we, we need that sort of thing for uh, community sustainability. Uh, do you have any thoughts uh, around that? or You know, I, I, I too love what John is doing, and he, he wants to change the world through leadership. And leadership, he's going to different countries and training government officials and making sure that people all around the world, like you and I, have this tr the training, the skills the facilitating opportunity to teach people really how to influence. And, and that's what leadership is, is how do we treat others? How do we influence them to do things that maybe they weren't believing that they could achieve themselves? No, that's nice. Hey, so we're going to talk about capacity today. And honestly, I'm, I'm here as a, a learner. Um, I, I mean, I've, I've tried things in this area and, um, uh, with chronic fatigue, and so capacity is is a big issue for me. It, it's been uh, a trial uh, for the last five years, and uh, honestly, I, I've I've found some things that that work and th some things that don't work. Mm -hmm. And so uh, interested in, in hearing your your thoughts. And um, could you give us a, a little you know kind of an overview of of capacity? You know. Uh I, I truly believe this, that no one on the face of the earth is living up to our full capacity, our, our full potential. We all have more that we can do. We all have more that we could accomplish or think or believe. It's We've got to be challenged to that point. We've got to grow into that point of capacity. And, uh, you know, we were talking a few minutes ago about our daughters, my daughters, and and uh, there's always things that they say they can't do until we help them see things differently. And I think that's a lot of uh, really what capacity is about is what we have as knowledge and what we see in front of us. Yeah. Uh, how would you define uh, capacity? You know, capacity is what we can achieve or what we can influence. And uh, we all have inventory of time. You know, there's only so much time every day, but how we maximize that time or use our relationships and our time and our activities to influence and build greater capacity. Uh, it, it's so easy to put a lid on ourselves. And, and that's, sure. that's what I want to refer to. To grow our capacity, we have to push through the lid that we have. Sure. You know, I, I think in, in sort of pushing my own limits, um, so here's a few things that I've learned and, you know, would like to hear your thoughts on. So, um, I think uh, probably the area where I could grow the most in capacity is, is attitude. Mm -hmm. And I've, I've noticed uh, different things that, that kind of drain my energy uh, attitude-wise. Yep. And, uh, you know, for so long, I, I just um, 
thought I was just one of the you know people with a pessimistic bent and but but you know as as I've gone on I realize that it just doesn't work you know it doesn't work to be negative and and so as I as I work on that um it it helps it helps a lot with with energy management Absolutely. things like that but I I've also learned that I I know my physical limit and my numbers aren't that great actually my my physical numbers are are not that great and so i've i've really um i mean i'm glad to know kind of what some of my when when i'm getting that physical boundary plus that physical boundary and all that but uh really i i uh, th- there's barriers you know mm-hmm. there there's there's limits beyond which it's it's not good to push you know yep. people Will give themselves, you know, health problems and and things like that. So, what's your perspective on on balance and figuring out your limits and that sort of thing? You know, I, it does start with what do you want to achieve in in your life, your family, your business, and recognizing what are my strengths. And and I'd always start with building off of your strengths. If you know this is a key area that you love to do and it's a strength then how can you maximize it? If you're trying to do things that aren't in your strength zone, it does wear you down or things that aren't exciting to you. And I I think that's a powerful thing is we've got to make sure that we're doing things that we love and enjoy. And uh, that's where it starts. If you love something, you'll have energy around it. And you you mentioned attitude. I, I really believe this 90 plus percent of our results that we have lie between the six inches between our ears and how we think about things, how we approach things, how we respond to things. I I teach my clients to stop watching the news. You know, most of the news only talks about what are the negative things going on in the world. And when all we focus on are the negative things, guess what we see more of? the negative things. So start looking for the positives. Start finding the good things every day. Yeah. So uh, help me understand the following. So one thing that I've discovered, uh, you know, you, you, you learn more from your mistakes than than anything else. And so I, I can say that I've learned some things uh, through uh, doing it wrong <laughs> and in terms of, yeah, I my energy goes out the window uh, for certain tasks. I, I've tried, uh, you know, I'm trying to improve my attitude when I'm doing these things yep. and all kinds of stuff, and and it just saps my energy anyway. You know, it just kind of lifelong, you know. I'm not good at accounting, not good at <laughs> admin and things like that. And so, um, you know, I'm learning to, to enlist the help of others yep. for that. And, um, you, you know, it's funny because that in itself requires a lot of work, you know, right. pre- preparing those, those documents, those, those guidance sheets, things like that. And, and yet, um, that is easier to do because I know in the end that that, uh, that, that makes things more efficient overall. So, so it's easier to, to do rather than sitting there knowing that I'm doing something I'm not good at and, and knowing that, that really it's going to stay this way because I'm not enlisting the help of anyone else. Mm-hmm. So what, what are your thoughts in, in that uh, area? You know, it's, it's, it's a human instinct to keep a hold of things. You know, we, we want control of how things are done. And it takes a true leader to say, I'm not good at this. I want you to do this. And being able to have that humbleness to say, you know, it's, it's okay that I let somebody else do this. And, and that's, I think that's a struggle that every human has is that we, we have things that someone else could be doing or should be doing, but we take it because we want it done a certain way. I mean, if somebody can do it 80% as good as you can, let them do it because it's going to reduce your stress, reduce your work time, whatever it might be. Right, right. So... <clears throat> What's your perspective on on the following? So, say someone is is doing something that they know they're good at, you know, that drains them, all that sort of thing, and they um, 
but but they want to increase capacity. So so they 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 push it, um, and that doesn't that really doesn't help that much either. They're just spending more time doing something they're not good at, mm-hmm. and uh, in the meantime, uh, their family suffers, their health suffers, things like that. What would yeah. you say to that situation? You know, I, I think there's there's a thought process that through it and and really digging into is why do you want something different than this why do you want x result why do you want to interact with this type of person you find out the why and then go even deeper why is that you know it, it's it's been written many places but go, go through a five why and dig deeper the deeper you understand why you want something the deeper you understand it yourself So you can say, you're right, I do want that now, and this is why I want it. You have to have an emotional connection. And I I think there's a lot of businesses today that are getting closer to that. They have a real mission that they're after, and so they have a deeper why. Why are they in business? Well, that's each one of us needs to be clear. What is our true why? Why do I want to do something? And if that why is deep enough, we're going to change our behavior. We're going to change our actions to make it happen. But if the why is not deep enough, we're going to keep doing what we've always been doing. Sure, sure. Take us through a five why example. So, uh, so tell me, wh- why do you love doing the the internet radio show? Why do you love it? Because there's several reasons. Which which one do you want? Just choose one. <laughs> I like having people that make a difference on the show. To help other people make a difference. So why is that important to you? Because we live in an age where sustainability is in question, and there's real questions behind that. And I guess something more innate to me is that I I, I hate waste. I hate landfills. Uh, I, I I hate waste of of any kind, e- even though. I tend to waste myself. Uh, I don't like it when I do that, you know. But it's, it's just kind of this innate aversion to to waste of all kinds. So why do you want to change that waste? Why do you want to make that different? <clears throat> because the I work better and the work world works better when we're when we're more efficient and doing what we're made to do, type thing. Why would that make a difference to the world? Uh, because there's limited time and, and resources, so we need to maximize those. And, and when, when people do that, then, then really there's, there's enough for everyone. You know, it, we, everyone, it kind of gets into the, the scarcity versus abundance thing. And, and, you know, we're, we're not limited when we're, uh, in alignment. Yeah. So what, what are your thoughts on that? So I, I, I absolutely agree with that. I, I think there are more resources out there than we, we can even imagine today. And that is the abundance versus scarcity mindset. And when we have a scarcity mindset, we don't see what is in front of us or all the opportunities. We only, you know, scarcity is there's not enough. Abundance, there's more than enough. You know, whether it's uh, resources, financial, whether it's uh, employees, whether it's uh you know, you name it. There's more out there if we look for it. We have become a global economy, and there are more tools out there, more resources, more things that are free than we could ever imagine that can help every person grow and learn every day. That's yeah. abundance. And, you know, we, we just walked through, yes, about the five why. I think we went through four whys, but look at where it, look <laughs> at where it took us. It <laughs> took us. Part of why you're doing what you're doing, what I heard was, you want everybody to have more of abundance and abundance mindset. And when we aren't wasting things, we see more, we can achieve more and we have more, you know, that was the deep why. And that's what drives you to do what you do every day. Yeah. I, you know, I think we did, even though we didn't do the fifth one, I think we got to the bottom. Really it, it is for me, it's that innate aversion to waste. Absolutely. You know, it just drives me nuts. So that's actually why I, I want to change my, myself and increase my capacity because I, I don't like waste. Yeah. I, I don't like dealing with chronic fatigue at all, you know, because I, I, I know I could be doing more. 
and it just it bugs me to no end. Mm-hmm. But um, hey, and getting at uh, abundance. So in terms of that, that's one thing that that I like about uh, what I'm doing is is I have a high degree of confidence that that there aren't limitate limitations in this area of of preventative health care. I mean that that's an area where where you know I don't have to worry about oh my goodness you know you know such and such is doing preventative health care now boy am I am I worried you know you know we the, there will never be enough people doing preventive health care I mean we all need to do it ourselves you know and uh, and it's it's difficult enough that that there's just never going to be an end mm-hmm. to it. There, there's never an end to growth. And and actually, that might be something you can speak to is why why is there no end to growth? You know, it's it's interesting. So many people they graduate from high school or they graduate from college and say, "I'm done learning. I've I've learned all there can be. I can now go do my career." Well, that's just the beginning. You know, my belief is the more you learn, the more you realize what you don't know. And, and that's where, again, abundance or, or growth is all about is the more that we can learn, the more we see that can be done. And the more that we see that could be uh, communicated or built or, you know, just thinking of technology, how technology has changed, but it's because people keep learning and understanding what is out there that we don't know. Yeah. So, so for me, it's how, you know, health healthcare as it pertains to sustainability and for you it's business coaching and life coaching and uh forgive me if i'm leaving something out there but why <clears throat> why is that an area of abundance for you why why do you uh have confidence that that there's never going to be too much of that sort of thing you know i define what i do as i bring clarity to how ceos and their executive teams add zeros and run and manage their business and I really believe today that business leaders, and, and this is leaders, even if you're not a CEO of a company, you're an executive, you're a manager, whatever it might be, we're not seeing the full opportunity because we're so focused with what's immediate. When we step back and we understand what is the big picture that we're really driving for and are my actions taking me closer to that, that's a leader. A leader sees more than others, a leader sees before others, and a leader sees farther than others. And today, we're only looking, and I'm talking about the, the general population, we only see what's right in front of us. We're such a, an immediate response uh, culture that we are missing so many things, so many opportunities, and so many ways of doing things well. Yeah, yeah. Hey, we are going to go to our first break uh, coming up here, but... Uh, Monty Wyatt is with us today. He is a professional business coach and personal coach with the John Maxwell team. And we will be back after a break and uh, fill you in more on uh, the value of coaching. Credit cards are like grandkids. They love you, sometimes get out of control, and it's fun to get a new one. Who can stop them from piling on? Hi, I'm Tom Coates with Consumer Credit of Des Moines. At the end of the day, you can return the grandkids, but you're stuck paying off bad credit card debt. We'll help you put the fun back into using credit cards responsibly. Right, kids? Yeah! If you need help getting credit cards off your back, call Consumer Credit of Des Moines. Hi. My name is David Burrier, your Hope Coach. 
I host a live weekly talk show called I've Been There every Thursday afternoon at 5.30 right here on webcastonelive.com and on my weekly radio program Saturday mornings at 10 on Truth Network 99.3 FM. I interview common everyday people who have survived incredible life challenges and who testify to God's faithfulness in the midst of their storms. So join me as we bring a message of hope and encouragement. Everybody needs hope. I know, because I've been there. Hey everybody, I brought Northern Lights pizza. And it's got Graziano sausage. Rockton Prevention is celebrating 25 years of creating a caring community. We want to say thank you to the tens of thousands of Rock High School mentors that have carried our message of health, love, and encouragement to over 1.5 million children, teachers, and parents. Our mentors teach children methods and skills to prevent bullying and drug use. Thank you to all the school administrators, teachers, and counselors for the opportunity to serve you. Rock on, fair citizens. Rock on. This is Pat McManus for Rock and Prevention, the Richard O. Jacobson Foundation, and this station. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. It's Ted Shire with Jet PHC and Jet Radio. And Monty Wyatt was, is with us today. He is a professional business coach with the John Maxwell team. Uh, Monty, welcome back. Hey, thank you. Hey, one of the things we were talking about on break is uh, how we can help people with this issue of, of capacity and it's intertwined with personal growth. So, so help us understand the following. Uh, when, when, what, are, what are some of the things that can help people desire personal growth because uh, it's it's really not the areas where we grow the most are things that people wouldn't choose naturally. So, mm-hmm. so what are some of the things that can get us past that? I, I do believe that everyone has to get clear on what are their goals? Where do they want to go? What do they want to achieve in their personal life? You know, my beliefs is your personal goals should always drive your your, your business goals, or your career goals. And so many times the business that we're in or the career that we're in guides us and that guides our personal life. And once we get clear on our personal goals, now we should have a deep desire. Without those personal goals clear, we don't have that desire. But once they're clear, we should ask ourselves, who do we have to become to make that happen? Uh, my my favorite phrase, and it's on the license plate of my vehicle, is be times do equals have. To have what you want in life, you have to be the right person and do the right things. And in order to be and do the right things, we have to grow. And it could be discipline that we have to grow in. It could be uh, our mindset, as you said, our positivity. It could be in our relationships we have to grow. So we have to learn how to have those conversations. Uh, it, it's interesting. Our, my wife and I have three daughters. Our middle daughter is a swimmer. Okay. She swims probably two hours a day, five to six days a week to go and swim five, six meets every six months. And she swims for a couple minutes at each meet. She has a deep passion that she wants to continue to improve her times. Well, how does she improve her time? So she learns how to turn better. She learns when to take her breaths better. She learns how to hold her hands differently or do the stroke differently, whatever it might be. So it's incremental steps like that. But she has a deep desire that I want to continue to get better. And she has a personal goal. She's only 13. She wants to swim for many years. She wants to swim competitively for many more years. And, and I think we as, as adults, we lose that competitive edge maybe too young 
And what is it that you're out to win? You know, in your life, what does success look like to you? Yeah. And every person should define what that success is. Okay. So, so you, you've kind of led us into the ebb and flow here, you know, and, and when, you know, seasons of life, stages of life and all that, there's ebbs and flows of that motivation. So is it a problem? Uh, how, how do you gauge uh, the fouling? So, so say, hey, you know, you're just feeling so bad that it, it really doesn't matter. You know, your, your life goal doesn't matter, but then it comes back. What's your, what's your perspective? You know, you, you rest up and then it comes back. What's your perspective in that situation? Well, you know, uh, I, I do believe that you have to rest to win the race, okay? So we all go through seasons, but where do you want to gain energy at? Where do you want to live? What's the legacy you want to leave? And once you identify those things, you can put more energy around it. And, and then you have a focus of what do I need to improve to give me more energy to achieve that result. And, uh, and you're right. Sometimes we need to rest. Sometimes we need to grow. Sometimes we need to follow the momentum that we have. But we all have seasons and we have to recognize when do I need to be growing? Right. And what's in front of me that I need to be overcoming? Because we always have a left and a right that we can turn. Right. And uh, our choices determine if we want to go up the hill or we want to coast. Yeah, yeah. So um, when I, I've I've heard it said that uh, you there there are times when you don't feel like doing something, but you do it anyway, and then you feel like it. How can you speak to that? I I do believe in that. That sometimes our mind tells us that we can't do something or we don't need to do something. We just need to take action. Uh, instead, we there's too many people waiting until they feel like it. We need to go out and do it, and then when we experience success or good momentum, then we'll want to do it again. But if we're waiting until we feel like it, we're never going to feel like it. Yeah. So I, I do believe it's a choice to take action every day. Okay. And my 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 business is called Action Coach Business Coaching, and it's about we got to take action every day. Yeah. And so lead us through that process. What what if uh, a person doesn't know what to do? So I'm going to use the word intentional. Okay. And, and there are a lot of people who don't know what to do, but my, my belief is that actually once you get started, you figure out what to do. It's that getting started mode. We have to be intentional and we say, I'm waking up at this time during the day. I'm going to do these things today. And you have to follow through and be intentional. I, I've got a number of clients that, you know, the discipline to get things done is one of their biggest challenges. Uh, as you said, we get connected and trying to do too many things in a day that maybe half of them we shouldn't even be doing. Well, identify what are the most important priorities that you, only you can do to get to that outcome or to get to that benchmark today or this week and only focus on those things. But when are you going to do them? And you got to say, I'm doing them now. Yeah. And if, uh, if you say, yep, I'm going to get up at seven o'clock and I'm going to start going to the gym. Well, you're going to wake up at seven. It's too easy to hit the snooze button. You know, set out the athletic clothes, you know, make sure that you have everything prepared for you. Have a buddy that goes with you. We all need accountability. And that's, that's a critical thing that I provide is discipline, implementation and accountability for my clients, because no matter how good we are, we need someone every day to be pushing us. And, and once we are intentional, know where we're going, and we have that accountability partner, we can get more done. We can push that capacity level. Yeah. So how, does, uh, how do priorities help us understand how priorities impact capacity? So I, I do look at it this way. And, and I, when I work with my business owner clients and, and the executives I work with, we always start with the big picture. You know, it could be longer than one year, but it could be one year. What are the results we want 12 months from now or at the end of this calendar year? And then we have some great discussion. What are the three, four, maybe five things that have to happen in this 12-month period to get those results? What do we have to get right? Well, then I break it down even farther and say, okay, in the next 90 days, 
between now, okay, it's it's early September, uh, between now and the end of the year, what, what must happen to get those things done? What are the three to five priorities that we have to focus on to get those results? And then let's break them down to actions. Priorities can be actions, but most priorities uh, are, are high-level things that say, we've got to make this project work. Well, great. What are the 15 actions and dates that we have to do to get there? By us breaking down the priorities into action steps, we can see that we can have more capacity when we s- eliminate things that aren't helping us get to those results or priorities. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, you know, I, I can... Um you know, some people are oriented uh, where where they thrive on a huge to do list. Uh, I, I I'm not personally that way, but but when I when I when when people figure out what their uh, what their bent is, what where they how they work the best, you know, and and for some it's like you described. You know, you, you get those you get clarity mm-hmm. on those top priorities, and, and the energy level starts to go up. Absolutely. And I know uh, what what you just said is true for me on a daily basis. If I if I have a few priorities, uh, it, you know the energy goes up because I can focus on those, and I'm not constantly worried about all those ten other things that um, you know I I may or may not get done type type thing. But any any follow up thoughts on, on you, that? you you mentioned a to do list. Everybody has their to do list. I teach my clients to eliminate the to-do list. Instead of putting together everything on a piece of paper that you want to get done, put it in a time block when you're actually going to do it. And even if it's a month from now, six weeks from now, two days from now, put it into the calendar and say, this 15 minutes is when I'm going to work on this. Because a to-do list just stares at us and it just overwhelms us. If we are truly disciplined to our time, we know that I'm going to spend 15 minutes on this, and after 15 minutes, we're done. You know, we have uh, kids go to school. They have a test on Friday. Well, you have to study between now and Friday. We don't see where we're at on Friday, and we'll determine if we take the test. No, the test is on Friday. You're giving yourself a certain amount of time, and I think it's the same way with any item, any to-do that we might have. I'm going to give myself an hour. I'm going to work on it for an hour. Then I'm going to put it to the side. I'm going to go to make these phone calls. Or and then I'm going to work on it an hour next week on Tuesday at 10 o'clock. Yeah. We have to guide our time. That's about being disciplined and intentional. Okay. And um, what about, can, I, 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 under, I understand what you're saying there in terms of blocking time. That really does help. You know, you get, uh, you can almost feel this stress level going down as you as you just kind of yep. do things that way um how uh is capacity uh impacted by campaigning in, uh, in other words hey you know you, you look at those big three you know for for the year or whatever and and actually and then you're you're breaking it down and then so one of the steps in that you know you've got clarity you know it needs to be done and you know it's going to require big blocks of time. So um, how do you how do you work those big tasks that require big blocks of time? You know, I, I research and, and relate it to capacity. Yeah, and, and I'll say this: I, I've read it in many places. Research says that if you focus on something for more than ninety minutes at a time, you start to lose energy. So I, I'd put it. Your big work, like you're referring to, I'd put it into 90-minute blocks. You know, from 8:30 to 10, I'm going to work on this. Then I'm going to go recharge. I'm going to go make a couple phone calls. I'm going to have a couple conversations, and then maybe from 11 to 12:30, I'm going to go back and dive into it. We need recharge time. If I'm going to sit at my desk for eight hours a day and just focus on something, I'm going to get drained and bored. <laughs> we all need to have. Uh, a break so our mind can continue to refresh, but also see things in a different light. No, that's that's fantastic. I I, I totally agree with that. So there's a there's a workflow to the day. It, Absolutely, you, you, you have to kind of structure it. So that that leads us to structure. How you structure the day. So what you just said is pertinent to that, and and just go into more detail about how you structure your day. 
for capacity and energy management. So the first thing I would ask is, when do you have the most energy in a day? Okay, if you have the most energy in the morning, then I would do your hardest tasks in that time frame. You know, our hardest tasks are the think time or that project work or making tough decisions. So when should you do that? You know, most people, they get to work, we check emails, we do this, and we get drained already just by checking emails because it's stressful. Somebody's asking for this or that. We have to take ownership of that time and say, you know, from 7.30 to 9.30 is my most motivational time. I'm going to use that time to be productive. And maybe you, you know, you get tired later in the day. You put simple tasks at the later time of the day that you don't have to think as much about. So you do have to find out when you're, you're, you're most energized in the day. But I also would say <clears throat> to help prioritize, it's, it goes back to your strength zone. What are the things that you love to do and that you're good at? If you're doing things that you absolutely despise and you're really not good at it, that is draining your energy and it's taking you longer than it should. Be willing to delegate or give up or let something go to the side if you're not energized by it and it's not a strength. And, you know, that's how everybody could gain I'm going to say a few hours a week just by getting rid of some things that aren't energizing to us. Yeah, yeah. Any um, uh, any other details you could you could add uh, for us? You know, we all uh, we all think that only we can do something because it's my job responsibility. Well, thinking of it as uh, who else could do this that is not. Uh, I don't want to be disrespectful, but we've got to look at what value am I bringing every hour? And if I'm responsible for a lot of things, what value should I be doing right now to impact my team or my employees? If I'm doing paperwork of some sort that's not adding value to my team and that's my responsibility, who else could do that paperwork? Do I have an assistant? Do I have processes that could be automated to do those things for us? And there's so many things that can be automated today that save us a tremendous amount of time. We should be maximizing them. Yeah. But we've got to look at what value should I be bringing in an hour? Yeah. So uh, with delegation, uh, now we've come up to another kind of capacity issue that can, that can increase our capacity. Uh, let's talk about how to delegate in, in terms of, you know, go into some detail in terms of how to, how to train your people uh, and, and, and sort out those tasks uh, and who to send them to and things like that. So th there's a couple things I want to tie into delegating. You've got delegating and, and you've got empowering. Empowering is trusting people to do what they should be doing. So that's empowering. But also part of empowering is giving them the tools and resources. And to help do that, I, I want to go through a process of delegating. Number one is, in order for somebody else to do it, you have to teach them how to do it. So I'm going to do it, and I want you to watch me. You know, maybe you need to take some notes. Maybe you need to take some screenshots, whatever it is on the computer screen. You take pictures, whatever it might be. I'm going to do it. You watch. Well, once I see that you've gotten some things, I want you to do it, and I'm going to watch. And I want to see that you are doing it, following what you wrote down, following the way that I taught you. And once I see that you can do it, I'm going to let you do it on your own. But there's one critical step to make sure that people are delegated. Well, we've got to have the resources. You know, they've got to have the knowledge. We've got to give the time. We can say we delegate all day long, but if we're not teaching people how to do something, we're going to be frustrated that they didn't do it the way I told them. Well, we didn't teach them. We told them. There's a difference between teaching and telling. And, and that last piece of delegation should be that that person doing that role now should teach someone else. Because you really learn when you have to teach somebody else. And if I want you to learn it, I'm going to teach you, and then I want you to teach somebody else. Nice. Let's, uh, let's pick up on some other aspects of delegation when we come back. We're up to our next break here. And Monty Wyatt is with us today. He is a coach with the John Maxwell team. And we are talking about capacity. Thanks for joining us today. 
Northern Lights Pizza's amazing garlic butter makes amazing breadsticks. Now available in 12-ounce bottles at Northern Lights, High Bee, and Graziano's. Northern Lights Pizza. I'm Brian Leach, owner of Service Legends, and my position is Chief Talent Officer. I'm Nicholas Wonderscheid. I am Bernie Hobbs. And I'm the Service Manager. Marketing Director and Client Relations Manager. Everything that we do is about ensuring that we exceed your expectations. Our clients are important to us. 100% satisfaction. We're not just focused on heating and cooling. That's the easiest part of our job, actually, is fixing furnaces and air conditioners. Everyone that we come in touch with, we want to improve lives. Bottom line is, we've got our installation guarantees, 25% energy savings guarantee, comfort guarantee, temperature selection guarantee, property protection guarantee. 100% satisfaction guaranteed, fixed rate or it's free. All of those guarantees are backed up with a 100% money back guarantee to hold ourselves accountable to making sure that you get what you're after. Just fixing the problem today, if they have another problem five days down the road, it's still fixed right or it's free. We use what's called straightforward pricing. Our technicians are gonna give you an exact to the penny price on what it's gonna take before they move forward with any repair. That way you know what to expect. It's the same price every day. No surprises. If you get off work at five o'clock in the afternoon, you come home, you realize that, oh, my furnace is broken. Now you need to call somebody out that night. You shouldn't have to pay more for that. We're guaranteeing service 24-7. We run afternoons, evenings, nights, weekends. We're staffed to work that. Phone rings at 3 in the morning. You'll get one of our representatives answering the phone every time. We're not sending you out to Timbuktu and some call center. It's our service legend team members, our mission control team. I'll take a call anytime. And then they answer the phones the same way during the day as they do at night. It's a great day at your service company. How can we make you smile. That's the only way to provide true 24-hour service. When you're able to let somebody actually live in their home safely when they weren't able to do that before, where they don't have to stay up at night and worry about is the heat going to come back on? Are we going to freeze the pipes? Is the baby in the room next door going to be sick because they got too cold? When you're able to help somebody overcome challenges like that, that's impacting a life. That makes a difference. I get goosebumps thinking about it. I love the team. I love the people that I work with. <laughs> we have fun, but we work hard. I call them my ambassadors of legendary service. If you could just envision what that is, that's who we're sending to your home. They literally will call in, pick up the phone and call and say, hey, I want to talk to your manager. And I get on the phone, they're like, that technician that was at my house was the greatest technician ever. That's cool to me. We want to brighten people's days. Every person that we have going into the house has gone through an extensive background check. Drug testing, we have a very thorough interview process that one out of 140 people make it through. If we promise you something, that's what you're going to get, no matter what. We're here when you need us to protect the safety and comfort of your family. If you're not happy, we're going to make it right. If we're willing to put 100% money back guarantee on what we do, what type of work do you think we do? Give us a call. We're there for you 24-7, 365 days a year. Enough said. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. everybody, it's Ted Shire with Chet Radio. We are with Monty Wyatt today, and Monty is a coach with the John Maxwell team. Welcome back, Monty. Hey, love the conversation, Ted. Yeah. Hey, let's keep going a little bit on delegation and empowerment. You mentioned teaching versus telling and how that works, uh, because the, there, there's so many different points where uh, you can miss something, you know, and, and hey, you're, you're trying to, to delegate and... and and you you think you're doing it right, and and you know something's something's missing. So, so keep going with the keys to uh, delegation, uh, and just enlighten us there. You know, I, I think another piece of delegation is sharing what is expected. This is the outcome that I am asking, and you know, a lot of times it really may not matter how they get from A to Z, as long as they get to Z. And so what is the clear expectation? What does success look like? And I think that's a question that every person in a business, every person every day should be asking themselves, what does success look like today? And what do I need to do to make sure that I achieve success today? It might be accomplishing uh, X project. It might be a certain communication. It might be getting a, a sale, whatever it might be. What does success look like today? But when we delegate, we have to make sure that person that we're delegating to knows a time frame of success. They know the measurement of success. They know clarity. 
too many times delegation is, well, I gave that to somebody else to do and they didn't do it. Well, did you give them a time frame? Well, no. Well, did you tell them what success looks like? Well, no. Well, we didn't do our job of delegation. We abdicated. That is the third one. I said empowerment, delegated, and then you have abdicate. Abdicate, you're just giving it. You're throwing it over the fence for them to do without any direction, without any resource, and you're expecting them to do better than you ever could without giving them any direction. Yeah. Is, is there ever a time... No, I, I agree with that, um, and I've made that mistake myself. But uh, is there ever a time where, hey, uh, you, you've got um, someone that you know is is good at something, and and hey, you, you know, the situation is such where you just, uh, you know, hey, they know how to do this, um, you know, you just you just let them lead, you know, that you let them figure it out type thing. What, what are your thoughts there? A absolutely. And I, I think uh, in every business, we need to be looking at fit. You know, what responsibilities or what actions need to be completed and who's the right fit to be doing that? We need to get clear on what actions need to get done in the business. Absolutely. But who has the characteristics or the strengths to make that happen? Too many times people are in roles or have responsibilities that don't match their strength zone. So they're frustrated. So they don't get it done in time. But those, when we do find the strengths, let them run with it because they love that. They get excited about it. When people are acting in their strength zone, they are more productive. They do get more done and they're having more fun at it. Okay. Now, um, when we were talking on the break, we were, we were talking about how leadership is intertwined in this issue. Uh, tell, us, tell us about that. You know, I, I really believe that leadership is about action, not about position. But I do believe that leadership, if we want leadership to change in a business, it must start at the top. Whether it's the business owner, the CEO, the department manager, you name it, people do what people see. And if the CEO of the business or the president or owner of the business is acting a certain way, but he's asking or telling everyone else to act a, another way, it's not going to happen. So people do what people see. And as leaders, you're always on stage. Everybody's always watching. And if you're not willing to do the right things, no one else will follow your suit. Yeah. So how do, can you tell us, you know, some, some stories or examples of, of that in, in your coaching or what you see in the news or something? So my clientele are, are CEOs and executives, and we have to learn new habits. As human nature, we have bad habits, okay? We have to find the habits that will get us the results that we want. And so it does start with that leadership team identifying what is it that we want to get better at? Maybe it's communication. So what do I have to do differently? Because when the leadership starts it, then everyone else will do it as well. And, and when I work with clients, we always start it with the leadership team. We're going to do it with this team for 90 days first. Uh, I want to use this example of a, a daily huddle. Okay. You got a leadership team. You want communication to be strong. Have a 10 minute daily huddle every single morning. And in that daily huddle, it could be done by telephone or face-to-face, -face, but you are, one, getting feedback from each other, you're sharing successes, and you're stating what your priority is for the day and where you might need some assistance. Well, we're not going to send that to the whole organization until the leadership team, the executive team, does it for at least 60 to 90 days because they have to see some results and get excited from it before anybody else in the organization will We'll get excited about it. Gotcha. So, what are your recommendations? <clears throat> excuse. Me, what are your recommendations to leaders for increasing their capacity? You know, I, I do believe that a leadership team, you have to do it together. We can't just say, "Well, two of you build your leadership; the rest of us are already there." I think when you grow together as a team, everybody's going to have their individual areas that they need to grow in. But we all need to go through the process together. If you're on a team with six others, let's go through the process together so now we are holding each other accountable. We're encouraging each other. We help push each other through uh, the challenges that we're faced with. 
if we try to do it all alone, it's going to take longer and it's going to be more painful. So let's go through it together. Yeah, no, that's great. So what, share some stories with us. Uh, just, you know, since uh, you're last year, you've, you've probably had some experiences and uh, what are some of those things that, that come to mind relevant to our uh, discussion today? You know, I, I think uh, taking ownership is, is a story I want to give. I've got a couple clients that uh, they have influence from other parties, uh, whether that's an investor or it's a, uh, a, a another type of business, whatever it might be. We have to take ownership for what we can control. It is too easy to get in a funk where we can't do anything because someone else has control or ownership of it. We have to define what is it really that I can influence? What is it really that I can do to make this different? And once we do that, we see that we can get different results. And But it takes that discussion or that challenge to say, hey, this is, uh, this is an opportunity and we can control these three things. Let's go impact those. We can't control those three. Let's not go after it. Yeah. And, and what are your personal uh, keys to, to capacity? You know, I, I believe that I'm a very disciplined individual and I, I schedule days and weeks in advance. Yeah, you can't schedule 100% of your day, but you probably can schedule 60 to 70% of it. And I make sure that I exercise, I get up early. You know, if I don't exercise, I don't have the energy at work. And so I make sure that exercise is a part of my routine. But one tip that I want everybody to do out there is before you end today, plan tomorrow. And choose what you're going to get done at what time. Plan that day when you're making phone calls. What meetings do you have? When are you working on your projects? When you go home, you will have done a brain dump, so to speak. You've gotten it out of your head. You don't think about it as much at night. And when you get clarity of tomorrow, you get to work. You have it on your desk. You know where you're headed. And if they go well, your brain has started to work on some of those projects ahead of time. Yeah. Is is that uh, your top uh, key? Is uh, you, you know, Give us your top three. You know, I, I'd say top three, plan uh, the, tonight before tomorrow. And uh, next one would be exercise for energy. Absolutely. And I guess the third one I would, would be is, is be intentional. You've got to be intentional with your time. Uh, I, I look at time as inventory. We only have a certain amount of it every day. And am I getting return on the inventory? Sure. So do you, do you think uh, wellness is something that a leadership team should do together? You know, I, I think everybody enjoys a different level of wellness. I think everybody should have their activity. Uh, saying that we're all going to meet at the gym at 5 o'clock in the morning may or may not work, but I think we all should have something that we're doing to give us the energy and finding what works for us. Everybody has different things that we get excited about or what feels good to us. Well, great, we'll find it. But if you want more energy, uh, exercise absolutely does it. Yeah. So, so actually that might lead us to an activity that's, that's helpful and that uh, a, a leadership team could work out, uh, go through a process to determine what gives each of them energy. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, do you like moving towards something or away from something and what excites you and what gives you energy and how can we help you balance that every day? Sure. If that gives you energy, start your day with that. Yeah. What about the value of you know retreats and 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 actually uh, th th this has been huge uh, for me and you know it, it's a human thing so so for anyone I suppose but uh, explain the value of reflection. Oh, that, that's that's huge. To me, we learn through reflection, and every ninety days I do that with my clients, and we say, okay, what what went really well and why. And how do we duplicate those things? And what didn't get the results that we wanted? What, what things didn't happen the way you thought they might or the way that you wanted? And why did they happen as well? And what can we do to make sure that they don't happen again? You know, we need to make sure we're learning the whys behind it. We can do a reflection and see what happened. But if you don't ask the why, you're really missing out on the big benefit of the reflection. Yeah. 
Now, when you go through that with clients, is that, uh, you know, like a and a time? Do you have little, you know, worksheets and, and tools for them? Help us understand. You know, it, it's a it's an open discussion. You know, my, my clients, I, I guide them to having 90-day action plans every quarter and their priorities and their results that they're after, what success looks like. So let's look at what success looked like, your priorities. Did you achieve what you said you were going to achieve? Why did it work? Why didn't it work? So they're doing the work based on, you know, what they had for their goals and uh, what they had as a focus. Oh, I got distracted. Well, let's talk about why. Why did you change priorities? Sure. Let's understand it. Yeah. And how do you evaluate uh, capacity? So is and when do you evaluate capacity? Is it, is it something that you just want to schedule, you know, or uh, help us understand those issues? You know, I, I think you can evaluate capacity on a daily basis. You know, when you plan tonight for tomorrow, look at, well, what did I do today? Did I try to do too much? Do I need to plan differently? Do I need to schedule differently? Every week, look back and say, what items really were beneficial to getting closer to success? Or what things... Can I just not do any longer? Or what meetings shouldn't I have this week? And so as you plan for the next week, build off of your capacity. And look at it more as what's return on my time. Yeah. You know, where's my return on time? Because we do only have so much time. Let's make sure we get the most out of it. Yeah. So, so when a person is, say, planning their month, something like that, and, and uh, they're looking at their, their priority list, and uh, their, their meetings and, and trying to balance all that out. Uh, take us through how to de- how to decide um, what to what to keep and and what to what to toss. So I, I'd first ask the question: What does success look like at the end of the month? Okay. Okay. If it's sales, if it's interactions, if it's whatever, and then what do we have to do to get those results? And when will you do that? And how much time will that take? Okay, what other things do you believe need to be done? Because it's all a belief. Well, I believe I need to get that done. Okay, will that distract you from getting those results? No. Great. Then you keep it. Will this distract you from getting those results? Yeah. Well, who can you delegate to? Or what would happen if even you didn't do it at all? And so you do have to start with what does success look like and how do I achieve it on a daily or weekly basis? Am I dedicating enough focus to it? Yeah, no, that's great. So let's finish up with, with the following. Over, over time, explain to us a little bit uh, for background uh, how coaching has, has evolved in the business world, why, it's, why it has increased to the level uh, it has and why it's replaced uh, a lot of consulting. And uh, for those that, that haven't been exposed to coaching, how it could benefit them and, and, you know, kind of the, the why everyone needs a coach, uh, Mm -hmm. uh, type perspective. Absolutely. You know, I, I, as I said, my audience is, is business owners and CEOs. And, you know, when I started 12 years ago, uh, I think it was more viewed as a luxury only if you could afford it or these things that you got a coach. And I want to relate that to having a CPA for your business or an accountant do your taxes, whatever it might be, you know, that was a luxury a long time ago. Now everybody needs that accountant or CPA to look at their financials because there are so many things that they can help with. That is where coaching is going. Every business should have a coach helping them see things that they can't see, helping them challenge things that they're not challenging and helping them bring education in areas to help them grow their mindset and their results that they're after, from whether it's marketing to sales to hiring. You know, it's, it's something that, as a coach, I see things that my clients can't see. And I help them look at every aspect of their business differently than somebody else might. An accountant only looks at the financials. Lawyer looks at legal. You know, banker looks at the loans and the return. I help look at every aspect of the business, including leadership and every aspect of hiring and recruiting and and, uh, marketing and sales. It's about how do I get done more in less time? Yeah, And, and it works. And it works. Tell us why it works. You know, it, it works because we all need help. 
There's not one person on the face of the earth that can do everything by themselves. And I can't think of everything. I can't see everything. We all need that sounding board to help us get better. And that goes to personal growth. When you are committed to personal growth, you will achieve more. What what is the aspect of, of human nature that makes coaching necessary? Uh, you, you know, I'm trying to get at like blind spots. You know, we all have a level of hum- humility. And we, we've got to have a little humbleness to say, I- I'm willing to listen to others. I'm willing to gain ideas. We have a I know mentality. Our culture has created an I know mentality that I can do this all by myself. And when we think we can do it all by ourselves, we're hitting our ceiling. We're hitting our lid that we're not going to go to that next level. Yeah, yeah. Hey, thanks so much for for joining us today. Your input was awesome. And uh, it's been Monty Wyatt with us today. He's a professional coach with the John Maxwell team. And he has helped us to understand capacity better. So thanks for joining us today. And join us again for our next topic on sustainability.